Hey, thanks for stopping by at Twisted Art Designs. Um, life got away from me and the holidays and whatnot, and so I had put off working on the Paper Dolls book for a while, and now I am back and ready to get going on it. And one of my subscribers asked me to go way back to the very um, initial step of how to make how, how to prep your pages and make a background. I just assumed that um, everybody knows how to do an altered book and not everybody does. So today's gonna be more um, fundamental on prepping your book and putting pages together and then making a background to then put your paper dolls from your uh, sewing patterns or whatever you're choosing to use, coloring book images or whatever uh, kind of dolls you wanna put in your book to decorate it. So first thing you wanna do after you've chosen your book, first thing you want to do is be sure that your book is a thread bound uh, binding, that it is um, not gl a glued together binding, that it is a stitched together binding. So what you want to do is find the threads, not sure if you can see that, see where you see those two little points there and in between is a thread. See that thread right there? Okay, so you want to find your page, pages where there's some threads. And then you're going to take two pages together and you're going to remove a set. And the reason that we do this is the book, if the things that we're doing in the book are really thick. Um, once you add all this fun stuff, when you put pages together and you add stuff, it almost becomes like cardboard and they're really thick. If you didn't remove a few pages here and there, you would end up with a book that was really wonky and um, your items won't fit into it and it won't close right. I mean, when it's done, it's not going to close all the way anyway because it is an altered book. But you do want to move some, remove some pages here and there. So find where there's the string and that is two pages that are together and then sewn on top of it. So if you pull it out, normally it comes out pretty easily. Sometimes it leaves behind a little, some little pieces that you can um, grab some tweezers and get out. But just remove some pages from the string area and you want to do that intermittently throughout your book. You, I don't do it all at one time. Some people do that. They get the whole book, they go through it, they move, remove some pages in the back, the middle, the front, and then they're ready to work on their book. I kind of do it as I go. I don't think there is a right or a wrong way. But when I was doing these front pages in the book, I went ahead and removed pages before I would put two pages together to keep working on this. So. That's where you want to start is find your strings, remove some pages. That's the first step. Okay, the next step is going to be putting pages together into what I call sets. Sets of pages of two. So here's two pages and I've already gone ahead and put them together with Mod Podge and they're dry and it makes it more solid than just a single page like this is really flimsy. When you put it together too, you get this nice thick base. So I call it a set, two pages. And then you're gonna do these two pages on the other side. And you're gonna put down your Mod Podge. I have mine in a, um, an, empty, an empty dish soap container. It works really well for me. So I just squeeze on some Mod Podge and then spread it out evenly with a brush. And you don't have to be too terribly perfectionistic at this. Just make sure that your layer of it is pretty even. It just makes it makes it um, stick better and you don't have any lumps in your pages. But So I put my Mod Podge on like this. And then I bring this next page over it. And I start in the crease. And I start rubbing outward. to put my pages together. Work out any bubbles, any bubbles that you see. Just kind of go from the middle out and work it outwards. And your a little excess might creep out the end here. That's good, that's fine, just wipe it away. But you just kind of want to work it. And then what I do is I close my book. 
and I put something heavy on it and then I let it dry. Okay, so that's what it takes to prep your pages and put two pages together and two pages together. That's going to make your pages that are going to, you're going to make a layout, a background layout on. Okay, so do that, let it dry. And once it does, we'll come back and I'll show you how to do a fun background. Okay, for this next step, now that your page is dry, I take two old file folders. Let me move this out a little bit. Okay, I take two old file folders and I use them over and over again. And I like to put them underneath my pages that I'm working on so that any of the edges that I go over, I don't uh, go into the pages that are underneath so they stick together. So that's why I do that. Okay, um, there's a lot of different ways for making a background. I'm gonna show you a simple one. I'm gonna use some plain white gesso and I'm gonna put that down on my pages just to kind of um, cover up the book text that's on here. You don't necessarily have to do this step. It's up to you. Gesso makes a nice, um, a nice, surface it has a little bit of tooth to it and it it'll cover up anything underneath that you don't want to have shown i'm not going to be putting down um, mod podging down pieces of paper on this technique it's a simple technique so for this one i am using gesso in lieu of the uh, book text so or pieces of paper so i'm going to put an even small thin even coat of white gesso on my pages and you can still see the text a little bit through a very very tiny bit but it won't matter because by the time you add the paint and the stenciling and things that we're going to do it won't matter so just prep your page by putting down a thin coat of gesso and then letting it dry you can use a heat tool to dry it but if you do it does bubble it a little bit so for me i like to just let let it just uh, let the angels dry it and just leave it alone and let it just dry by itself okay, this technique i'm going to do is an oldie but goodie um i learned it back in some art classes that i took years and years ago and i see a lot of people online doing the same thing because it's pretty standard so um, what you want to do is take some colors and i like to use three and i like to use colors that complement each other so i'm using a sunny day a tuscan teal and coral reef and i'm going to use these three colors on the page so what i do is you just kind of put a little bit of paint and it's very random you want to just drop some paint it doesn't have to be tons onto your page in random spots and do that with all three of the colors I like the way these three colors look together and they're kind of fun and bright so I'm going with it. Okay, let's see if we have enough on there. You'll know once you get started. Then I'm taking an old um, gift card thing and I'm going to start dragging this paint. I kind of leave it at an angle and you drag the paint straight down. I love these colors together. They look really nifty. And look at this awesome design that you end up with on your page. It makes a beautiful background. So you just kind of go back to the places that don't have paint and add some more. Um, turn it around to go get this top spot because I don't want to redrag. If you go keep going over the same spot you already did, you're going to muddy it up. So kind of stay away from areas that you've already done. Look at this nifty design and color. I love it. Okay, and then you just kind of play around with it till you get it looking the way you want. I'm trying to get it down there in the crack of the book there. 
but I kind of like my little pattern to go in the same direction. Okay, and then you let that dry, and we'll come back and add some more. Kind of fun. Okay, so I'm going to put down my stencil, and I'm going to use my cosmetic sponge and just dab in my paint and then dab over my stencil. And I'm using kind of a big pattern stencil because I want to cover up a pretty significant amount of area, but you can do whatever you want on your pages. Your pages don't have to be exactly like mine. These are just to show you some ideas, maybe some little techniques. So I'm going to go ahead and cover this stencil and then I'll be back. Okay, I've covered my area. Now I'm removing my stencil. And I went heavy in some spots, light in some spots, so some of that background comes through. And then on this side, I'm just going to add a tiny bit of that pattern to carry it over, but I'm not going to cover the whole page. Um, I like this pattern on this side, but I do want the same um, stencil pattern to come through. So I'm going to just... Go in here and dab around a little bit, and I'm going lightly. I'm letting that paint be very, very light in my sponge so that it doesn't cover up all that paint. It's just going to make that stencil shape, if you can see that. Okay, and that's just to bring those two pages together and make them cohesive. Okay, so now I've got another stencil. This one is the Tim Holtz one with the roses. And I think I'm going to do that in a really light pink. This technique technically is just a stencil layering and you're using lots of different colors of paint and lots of different stencils and you're layering them and doing it just kind of strategically and seeing what the background tape, how it takes shape. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same thing. Take my cosmetic sponge with my baby pink paint and I'm going to just start down in the, here in the corner and I'm going to add some of these pretty pink roses. And again, if you want the background to show the stuff that's behind it to show through, then you just press lightly and don't put a lot of paint on your sponge. If you want it more solid like this, then you'd press harder and do more paint. And I kind of like a combination of both. I like the softness and then I also like some that are solid and it's just its preference and they don't have to be everywhere it's wherever you want them it's it's your design so I'm gonna just add some pink roses I love that that looks really cool so I'm gonna keep playing with the rose stencil and the pink paint and then I'll come back after okay let me zoom in and show you what it's starting to look like I've got my paint that we that we um, pulled through with the, the credit card or the gift card and then I've got my first stencil and now I've got my second stencil with the roses and so it's really starting to take shape I love it I love this kind of technique it's so fun okay and the next one I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna use a navy blue I like to do my light pretty stuff and then I like to throw in a little bit of really dark for for contrast and so I'm going with a super dark um, indigo blue and I'm gonna just use a stencil that is now as I start out I use big stencils and then as I work my way forward to the front I my stencil pattern gets smaller and smaller and this is one of the Tim Holtz kind of looks like burlap and so I'm gonna take my indigo blue and I'm gonna start stenciling with indigo blue and I'm gonna just do it randomly like that see how that is oh love it looks really cool so I just basically pick a spot and start randomly putting some down and on this I'm going a little bit heavier with the paint because I want my indigo blue to really pop look at that love it love it it is so fun and I'm going to go along this edge that stencil will look cool on an edge that looks great on an edge so I think I'm going to do that down here on this corner to tie this page in Put some on the corner, do a little bit up here, going down in some rows, 
just a small bit in the middle. I don't want to cover too much of that neat pattern, but I do want a little bit of it to hint through. I think I like it. Okay, so I'm going to stop and again go clean my stencil. Um, while the paint is drying, it's a great time to go wash up your stencils. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, it's really starting to take shape. My last color, I'm going to use black. Just plain old, straight, really dark, deep black. And I'm going to use... Uh, this stencil that's kind of got this random random pattern, maybe a little bit of this brick pattern. I really kind of like that. So that's what my next one's going to be. And I don't use a lot of it. I don't do black in a lot of places. But adding a little bit of black on your last layer, to me, I just love the look. So that's a preference thing. You can do whatever you want with your books. I'm going to just throw some black in here. I like it. Okay, and I think that's enough of the pattern that I'm going to use. Maybe a little bit of the black dots and do them just lightly. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Love it. Black polka dots. I know this looks busy, but behind our paper dolls, it's going to be absolutely gorgeous. Trust me, it'll be really pretty. And they're going to be on top. They're going to cover. But this is just so, such an interesting background. It's going to give your page interest. So now I'm putting some paint on my little um, plate here. And I'm taking my little gifty card thing. And I'm going to run my edge like this through the paint. And I'm going to make some lines, scrape lines like this, and then like this. See that? Let's get a little closer so you can see what I'm doing here. I'm going to do scrape lines. You kind of just put the paint on the edge and then saw it back and forth on your page. And then I go across a little bit just to break up those lines like that I like that look I just just do I do that on a lot of things and I love it so I'm gonna add some of that here and there Ooh, it just finishes off this page it really really does I like it. Okay, let's zoom out and show you. There's the page. Looks cool. And I like to throw in splatters too, but I think because I've got my little choppy lines, I'm not going to do splatters this time. I'm going to leave that as it is. And then when you take out your little file folders, there are your two background pages to add your paper dolls to. Now all I need to do is go through my stash of um, sewing patterns and find a couple of girls that I really like. I think I want to try a technique, another, another technique like this one in the front where I made her uh, bottom of her dress and the top of her dress have some tulle. I think I'm going to do that on this page maybe with some lace use half of it and do a lace bodice a lace skirt i'm not sure yet so that'll be next but um the person linda g who wanted to see the process make your sets put them together with the mod podge let them dry and then do a cool and funky background that'll give you something to adhere your dolls too. Um, I'll do some more videos with some more backgrounds. We'll do some paper weaving. I'll do some where we actually put down uh, book text and torn paper and some other things and do some other techniques too. But this is just a simple and easy quick one. This, this was just acrylic paint and stencils, a little bit of gesso on the back, and um, a plastic card. 
some cosmetic sponges and I do wash those cosmetic sponges out and use them over and over again until they absolutely disintegrate and fall apart so I'm really thrifty that way so there you go there's a background hope you had a good time on this and now go find your doll focal and add it and I will show that in the next video what I put on top of this and how I did it I hope you enjoyed watching me make this layered stencil background. It's great for any mixed media project. You can use it in your altered books, your art journals. It's basically just the, um, the technique. So we're using it in this project in our Paper Dolls book, altered book. But um, have fun, play around with your stencils and your paints. Layer them, layer them, layer them. And see what you can create and come up with. And don't forget that art soothes the heart. So thanks for stopping by and playing along.